Hello, welcome back to RC Video Reviews. I know after watching this video, some of you guys are going to think I went straight around the bend, but trust me, I didn't. So many times we've talked about using batteries in parallel and series and how you can use them to charge or fly an airplane. One thing I've never talked about is how you can use a situation like this to create a power bank. Now the reason I'm doing this right now is because I'm still working on my box and I'll talk about that in just a minute. As I arranged to have external power set up on the box, I re realized I didn't have any batteries to do it. So I started thinking about solving the problem and I dug out these little 5200 multi-stars that I bought some time ago. These are three cell packs. I got them for like 12 bucks. And I used to use these in my Bixer when I used to fly long range, but I still have them and they're in good shape. The, I've checked the IR and the voltage. Everything look, looks pretty good on these batteries. So I'm gonna show you, check this out. I'm gonna show you how to make a 31,200 milliamp hour pack that can actually do 300 amps. Now, I'm not gonna go anywhere near that, but it could do it in theory. I'm gonna do a quick assembly video and hot cut through that, and then I'll explain everything at the end. Okay, so if you know anything at all about parallel charging, or if you've watched my videos, you'll understand what this is. This is six three cell packs wired in parallel, connected to a parallel board. You saw the video, this took me literally five, six minutes to do. And right now I've got a 31,200 milliamp hour pack that can deliver 300 amps. Now, there are some caveats to that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't try and run 300 amps on that. If you wanted to do that, there would be a way to do it, but this isn't it. So but that's not what I built it for. I'm just telling you what it's capable of doing. Okay, so now imagine being at the field. I've got my 32,000 milliamp hour block. I'm gonna plug it into my box. 13.6 volts is what that says. Now I'm gonna switch over to my pack. Here we go, we're going on the battery power now. And you can see that switched over to 12.3 volts. Now you say, okay, why, again, why would you go through all this? Let me go through some numbers with you. And I have a little cheat sheet. And if you're going to break out a, a, a calculator and do the math, don't bother. I'm just going to tell you right now, this isn't perfect, um, but I'm going to give you some rough ideas, some estimates, okay? So I'm going to go on the assumption that you use 66% of the capacity of your battery. That's what I use. I stop at 3.6. I don't like to fly below that. I actually really prefer 3.7, but let's just assume you're willing to go down to 3.6 volts per cell. That's about 66% of the usable capacity of the battery. So if you take a 2200 milliamp hour battery and you divide it out, you're going to find out that 66% is about 1452 milliamp hours. If you divide the usable capacity of this, it's not 31,200, it's only 20,592. So 20,592 usable MAH on this pack and against 1,452 mAh on a 2200 pack lets me recharge a normal 2200 battery 14 times. So I can recharge a... a 
a 2200 14 times with this. There will be some variations if you change the voltage and go from say a three cell to a four cell. And before anyone gets persnickety about it, I have tested this. This setup will charge a five cell 4000 at four amps. So even though it's stepping up that much voltage on these little chargers, it will do the job. It will not charge a six cell beyond about an amp and a half though, interestingly enough. These are my Vanquish packs and I can recharge one of these 11 times. And from my five cell 4,000, I can recharge this one about 7.8 times. So let's just call it seven, we'll round down. Seven times I can recharge that. There's gonna be some inefficiency due to the fact that this is probably gonna be running the whole time. So the, just by the fact that the chargers are on and the fans are on, that's gonna take some of my charge away. Now, let me make it real simple. Here, check this out. What if you just had a field charger? You could take this thing, you don't even need the box. You could just take this setup. Now, what I would do in a scenario like this, just to be clear, is I would take a voltage alarm. I'd plug the voltage alarm in. I'd set the cutoff for 3.7 volts per cell. You could probably do 3.6 because there's no real hard amp draw on these. So 3.6 would be okay. And here we go. You just plug in a battery, plug this in, and you can see, I won't do three amps, I'll just do 2.2. And there we go. 12.2 volts in, and there's 2.2 charge rate. So you get the idea, right? You can just take a, a system like this and you don't have to think about only parallel charging. You can also parallel discharge. I would encourage you to use the balance leads, keep the amp rate kind of low. Don't, don't punish the pack and use a balance board. And you can certainly use this as a power source at the field. And there's one other thing I'll show you just because it's kind of cool. Check this out. I've got these 10,000 milliamp four cells, but I also have these 5,200 four cells. So that's 10, 20, 32, 44. All I'd have to do is connect those to a parallel board and I got 44,000 milliamp hours ready to go. Think about this kind of thing in the event of an emergency. What if there's a hurricane coming or tornadoes coming? You can run out and charge these up. There's a lot of cycles of a cell phone or an iPad in here or powering a small radio that can keep you up and running. And you already have this stuff in your garage. If you don't have a parallel board, you'll need one, but that's it. You just take some, some batteries, put them in parallel, wire them together, and you've got a power source that'll last quite a long time. All right, that's it on the battery thing. And rather than continuing to do these standalone videos on the box, I figure what I'll do is just give you little updates on it as I go. Okay, so I got my switchable power system set up. And the other thing I added was this LCD panel that lets me watch the voltage and the current being drawn across all devices inside the box. So right now, between the chargers and the fans, I'm drawing 0.36 amps. And the power supply is supplying 13.75 volts. And I finally got my balance boards for the chargers. So I'll be installing those along with a couple more of these XT60 jacks for each charger. So that's it. That's the update on the box for now. With the inability to fly right now, I'm kind of stuck in the shop just doing projects. And I figured I'd just share with you things that I've learned or things that I figured out for how I'll be using my box as time goes on. So hope you enjoyed the content. If you did, your subscription would be appreciated. And for those of you who've been around for a while, keep the comments coming, keep the thumbs up, thumbs down, keep the engagement going. I appreciate that and have a good night.